This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to the Cyber Underground. I'm your show host, Dave Stevens. Uh, Dave the Cyber Guy, I guess you might call me. Well, today we're going to split the show again into two uh, sections because we've had some events that we want to cover, but we also have some stuff going on here, right here in the islands, and we want to cover that as well. So first part of the show, for the first 14 minutes or so, we're going to cover uh, the Hawaii Cybersecurity Awareness Month that's going on right now. We have a great guest with us here from an organization called Cyber Hui. His name's Jake Ross. We also have our great co-host with us again, the networking guy, Hal Culcheran, prof assistant professor at Kapiolani Community College. Welcome, guys. Thank Welcome you, to the show. Uh, just so our audience knows, uh, if they don't want to watch this, they can skip ahead 14 minutes past the commercial, and uh, we're going to be talking on our rant about uh, the Hawaii uh, gun laws and the gun laws across the nation and talking about that horrible tragedy that happened in Las Vegas and hopefully how something like that could have been prevented. You know, and I think the hospitality industry is reeling in Vegas over this one. That, that was sure. rough. Yeah, sure. Let's talk about good news and happy stuff first. Okay. Jake, tell us all about Hawaii Cybersecurity Month. But first, tell us about you, where you're from, where you, where you came from, and how you got here. And then, what is Cyber Hui? Okay, so I guess I'll start from, the, I guess, the where I'm from. I should have wrote those down in my remarks. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, from Hilo, actually. The, graduated from Waikai High School. Uh, joined the Air Force after after high school, kind of got my start there doing networking, uh -huh. long haul transport, got into the networking stuff, transitioned into the cyber thing that we call, what we call cyber today was just mostly information security. Um, a few years ago, about five years ago, Cyber Hui is about four years now, um, we started a nonprofit organization, Cyber Hui, and our mission is to inspire the next generation of cybersecurity professionals. So uh, primarily we deal with the uh, cyber, pa cyber Patriot competition. That's a high school cyber defense competition. It now rolls up into uh, from middle school up to high school. There's a civil air patrol, like Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts kind of thing. Um, JROTC, uh, and it's a huge contest. Right now we have 103 teams registered for Cyber Patriot 10. This is the 10th year of Cyber Patriot. And um, it's kind of broken up between the middle school, high school. And this is a national thing, right? So this is an international cyber, competition. It's so an international. There's, okay. there's uh, some international schools as well. So and the, these competitions, uh, they do uh, simulated labs, right? Uh, capture the flag, pen testing, stuff like it's that? It's more defensive. So it's okay. like um, the IT guy's worst day at work, right? It's like, hey, you're the IT guy at company X. Uh, oh, defend the mail server. Right. Defend the file server. Critical right. services that must uh, be maintained. You know, Joe quit. We don't know what he did. No, I love know, that. Well, there's, there's a lot of focus on pen testing, and there's right. not enough on defensive actions that every company needs. Well, it doesn't have that appeal, right? It's it, not, yeah, well, it's, it's not, not, it's not the matrix, kind of, right? right? Yeah, <laughs> You're more like the accountant, but IS. Right. So it's not as sexy. It's not sexy, right? But you know, the accountant. And then we win. Right? It's like it doesn't. It's not. So and that's kind of the name of the Cyber Patriot competition, not like IT Patriot. So it's, oh, okay. it's there's a lot of uh, marketing going on. But it's it's a really good competition. Hawaii's fared very well. We had uh, Lele Hua went to the finals last year. So they take about 16 teams out of the I think it was the 9400 um, that that enter. And they were, they have a four day competition, two or three day competition in Maryland. They fly them all out. The mentors, some mentors, the students, and the coaches. And wow. It's pretty cool okay, thing. so they get to see the East Coast and yeah. uh, all this stuff. Maryland's like ground zero for CyberCon, right? Right. Absolutely. And um, I guess that whole like DC DC area. There's a lot of. Um, Defense stuff. There's a lot of big companies out there, so it's it's in, it's nice. Uh, Northrop Grumman is the primary sponsor, and they put on a good show. It's, I love that you're doing this. A lot of people don't think about this, but Hawaii is right on the edge of the Pacific. We're the furthest furthest south and furthest west state in the union, and we're right here on the Pacific Rim, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, and target number one for any enemies that might be on the Asian sector. Yeah, right. Which might be coming up uh, due to our great relationship with our new administration and the leader of North Korea, that's going very well. <laughs> so this is good that we're training people to be aware of this when they're young, right? We don't want them to get into college and say, what's cybersecurity? We want them coming up through the ranks, right? I love that you guys are doing yeah, this. this with the, you, you mentioned Lelihua. Right. Uh, tell our audience uh, where in the state that is. Oh, Wahiwa, Lelihua, Wahiwa. Up on the, um, I think they're the central district. Of so this Oahu, on, Oahu, Oahu, on Oahu, Oahu, yeah, right? central Oahu. Okay. So they, um, yeah, they've done fairly well. The last, I think they made it a couple years ago. They've been to the finals three out of the six times I think they've competed in. Yeah, they've so been doing really well. Ilani, they got good manners. Yeah, they have really good manners. They yeah. have, um, and, and, and that's that's the biggest part of the competition is getting the mentors out there to, um, to you know, just kind of like spread their manal, right? Like, 
like I know all these these great things in my head and it's not just like how do you do networking and how do you do security and how do you do Windows and Linux hardening it's like how do you communicate that to high school medical students which I think that's probably the biggest challenge. That transitional language is a challenge. Yeah, right it's there, tough. Right? Yeah to so. to so and in business it's it's good to to tell the kids how to use this language to translate from geek to human right because right. someday they're going to be the cyber guy in a business and there's going to be business owners that really don't speak the, the tech language right. and you need to know how to bridge the gap yeah so right. this is great they have mentors like this so we're, yeah it's good it's really good and I mean it's kind of playing into like the cybersecurity awareness month so October is national cybersecurity awareness month nationwide nationwide we're, what does that involve uh, it's just a lot of awareness so there's different groups uh, that, that put together uh, programs there's some curriculum out there the governor signed the uh, cyber, the Hawaii Cybersecurity Awareness Month proclamation mm -hmm. this week, and then I think we have a picture of that. Do we have the, pro the proclamation up there? Not that anyone's going to actually read the, the whole thing. The picture. Oh, so well, there's there a is. picture with yeah. the governor right here. Signing. Yeah. And uh, for for Hal and I, we're so proud. Just to the right of the governor, Ige, there is Rochelle Manzalukan. She's a uh, president of our I ICT club soon to be part of the HATS Club, or Hawaii Advanced Technology Society. And uh, she's up at UH West now studying cybersecurity. Oh, oh there's the pro proclamation. There it is. It's great. It's great. So, and what is this? It's uh, a little small. Can we have a summary? I'll give you the summary. Right, so okay. it's, it's just cyber Readers security. Readers digest. <laughs> cybersecurity Awareness Month. Um, there is, if you want to read the whole thing, it's at the uh, ohs.hawaii.gov slash cyber website. Mm, okay. There's the pictures. There's our website up there now. Oh, there okay. you go. A bit overlay. Um, we're going to be having like 40 plus sessions throughout the state, um, sessions to kind of just educate um, kind of the Kapuna, mostly the, the old, older folks at like malls and libraries about like what is cybersecurity, how to be safe online. Massively important. It's, it's the big part we're saying is that like you were mentioning the, the students, there's um, the, the digital natives, right? And the, yeah. the, right? The, the people who haven't, who didn't grow up with the technology are the most, it's, it's just so hard to. They're the most sense. vulnerable, right? They, the, the computers really weren't, weren't mature when they were in the workforce. Right. So now they're beyond the workforce, and all they, they see is this wonderful device with the ubiquitous internet and the ability to communicate with so many people and socialize and trade information. Right. And there's so many dangers attributed to that, and it's great that you're telling them, whoa, whoa don't put everything out there. Here's some limits. Here's what you got to look out for. And I think there's both ends of the spectrum. There's like the digital natives who are just so... I put everything on Facebook, I'm going to live stream things, and then oh, it's not yeah, aware yeah. that stuff lives forever. So yeah, it's, look what I'm eating for breakfast. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to everything. So. Here's my new cat, you know. <laughs> so primarily it's that. Um, also plays into the ICC Hawaii has their 24th annual Discover Security Conference. That's next week. Um, there's also a ISSA International Conference, which I'm going to in San Diego. So what for our audience, ISSA? Oh, the Information System Security Association. Okay. So that's... Um, one of the, the um, certifications in the industry is the CISSP, Certified Information Security System Security Professional. I'm sure I butchered that. <laughs> CISSP. And um, ISSA is the organization that kind of like brings all your CISSPs together, your security professionals together. So they, they've been doing this conference for 24 years strong. Um, I'm going to San Diego to the international one. Um, and, I, and I like to plug ISSA Hawaii because they are primarily the, the, the financial driver behind CyberHuawei and a lot of, all of our, a lot of our efforts. But uh, I was put in for an international award, a Volunteer of the Year award, which I won. Wow. So I got a, a trip off to San Diego. So now that. you can get a night's sleep every once in a while now? Now that we'll you won see. the award? <laughs> we'll see. <right? laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Now that I can, I can rest now, I've, I've accomplished everything you I wanted. You took a deep breath. Okay. Mm, San. I got yeah. the, the Emmy, and then I got the International Volunteer of the Year <laughs> award. So. Right. <laughs> so so it's really good. I mean, and, and I should say Hawaii has just been fantastic. Um, we just had this past Wednesday, uh, Lieutenant General Nakasone, Paul Nakasone, mm -hmm. he is the Army Cyber Commander, and he came out and kind of talked to us about a group of about 100 people or so. I'm sorry we didn't get it out to you in time. That's but, okay. Uh, We're just a community college <laughs> uh, out there by Waikiki. We get forgotten every once in a while, but we don't forget you guys. Yeah, we're doing we're doing better. We're doing better <laughs> about our, our media marketing. So. And uh, we're always looking for volunteers, too. So if you guys want to be our media marketing person, just, just let us know. Shoot us an email, info at cyberhui.org. Uh, we volunteer way too much. <laughs> <laughs> we're hard to get any sleep ourselves. Yeah. But uh, yeah, these, these are worthy causes. Yeah, and absolutely. we're so glad you're doing it. And it's OK if you don't get in touch with us every once in a while. We jump in the mix, and we're all working as a team. We'll try. I mean, there's just so many efforts going on. And, and one of our big our big um, issues is that we, we work competitive, competitively with some of the organizations. So Cyber Hawaii was, was just, um, they had their, their, their coming out party or their unveiling at the Future Focus Conference. Like they're the new, 
the new um, big uh, industry in town or nonprofit in town that is doing similar efforts to us. You have the HATS organization, your community college organization, and we're kind of working um, next to each other a lot. We're trying to get more focused and working together. So we uh, brought in the HATS people. We're trying to do more with them. Uh, with your kits, I think, what is it? Yeah. Uh, they're, they are actually going to rename oh. to HATS oh, okay. Kapiolani. So okay. HATS was the original uh, high tech, uh, high, uh, what is that, Hawaii Advanced Technology Society. Right. HATS was the original computer club over at Honolulu Community College, right? And they have offered to rename all the other computer clubs at all the other campuses the same thing, okay. but have chapter versions of HATS so everybody can be part of the same club. So they can do things together and all come under one big umbrella. It's a lot simpler, I think, and right. I think that's the way it's going to go. And I think that, that probably a lot of benefits in doing that too, where it's like, like you're, the, you're the kids, you're the hats, you're the, you know, who, so having that one name, yeah. you kind of build that brand recognition. Oh, uh, so. yeah, that, that's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, what we're seeing is that each campus has a little bit uh, different take on cybersecurity. Uh, more infosec over here, more pen testing over here. Mm -hmm. But if all the kids start coming together, that that knowledge is going to wash back and forth and th give our kids uh, a broader breadth of skill sets, right? And that's Absolutely. what we want, you know. Right. And it's the community thing. That's one of the things I always drive back at. Like Cyber Who is, is, a, is a big community. We're not just um, inspiring the next generation. We're helping mentor the, the current generation of maybe you're a networking person who wants to get more into cyber. I've, I've encountered some developers, software developers, who are like, how do I get into this field? And uh, we kind of point them in the right direction or hook them up with people who have made that transition. So. The big thing about cyber is that you come from a diverse background. Oh, yeah. Many. You can't Absolutely. just walk in through school. You have to have a lot of breadth of experience. Yeah, because cyber encompasses everything. Oh, right. Absolutely. Physical to, to, to social to programming and networking. Right. Yeah. You guys are going to help us out uh, in, in oh, the show. Right? <laughs> we got that's an event coming segue, up this, right? this, uh, this October on the 25th. You so guys are going to come out and Wednesday, absolutely. have some poo poos with us. And uh, it's a big social event on our campus, right? right. For uh, Wet Wear Wet Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. It, it, it's a pretty good event. Normally, a lot of people come out. So hopefully, uh, we can get a good showing and maybe we can kind of help you guys financially on there. So it's a good pitch. You can kind of get the, uh, now that it's out there on, on air. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> hey, no now you got to give us some money now. Right, <laughs> Jason, get the checkbook out. <laughs> Start writing it. Yeah, right, right here on the show. <laughs> I got the big check. I should have brought the big check for you. Oh, now that'd be cool. Nah, now, what else is going on? What else is? Uh, there's a number of events here. Do you want to highlight any of them in the last couple of seconds we got before the break? I think we kind of hit on them all. I mean, there's a 40 sessions. You can hit our website. There's um, the cyberhui.org. Uh, we do a lot on Facebook. That's pri our primarily um, social media platform. Um, to Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we'll, we'll try and get out there. If you guys want to um, go to cyberhui.org and there's a join the Hui site, uh, you can kind of sign up to get on our mailing list and we can get some information out that way. Or Great info so. for not only people here but on the neighbor islands. So right. that, that information doesn't filter out to them very much. So and, and that's for me, too. Like, I'm from Hilo, so I, I know the pain. You know, you know the pain. Right? <laughs> right. It's like, oh, there's all these great things going on. If it wasn't just for that, you know, pesky ocean. Right, right. And there. it's not like you can just, like, paddle over. Just paddle. <laughs> you could. I'm just not in that shape. That, you'd have to be in some significant shape, right? <laughs> do that okay, uh, we're coming up on a break. I think we got about 30 seconds here. But is there anything you want to say in the last few seconds? Promote you, Cyber Hui, uh, the Cybersecurity Awareness Month. No, I think we kind of wrapped it all up. If you got, it, you have questions, go to uh, the ohs.hawaii.gov slash cyber or cyberhui.org, or you can hit us up at info at cyberhui.org. And is your email up there too? Uh, info at, right. that you're the info we, one. We, we spam okay. everyone because we're so busy. One of us, we, we'll do it by committee. <laughs> Somebody will email by you. committee, absolutely. Right on. Okay, well, thanks okay. for being with us, Jake. And stick around because after the break, we're going to go on a rant. All right. And I'd love to have you be a part of that. Okay. Okay, everybody, we got to take a little break for a minute here and pay some bills. We'll be right back with our rant on law and order, gun control, the Vegas tragedy. Okay, stay safe. Oh, grandmother, what big eyes you have. She said. All the better to see you with my dear. That's the wolf. What are you doing? Okay, cool. Research says reading from birth accelerates the baby's brain development. And you're doing that now? Oh, yeah, ah. yeah. this is the starting line. Push. Ah. Ah. When this is over, you're dead. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. 
Ted Rawson here, folks, your host on Where the Drone Leads, our weekly show at noon on Thursdays here on Think Tech, where we talk about drones, anything you to do about drones, drones, remotely piloted aircraft, unmanned air systems, whatever you want to call them, emerging into Hawaii's economy, educational framework, and our public life. We talk about things associated with the use, the misuse, uh, technology, engineering, legislation, with uh, local experts as well as people from across the country. Please join us noon on Thursdays and catch the latest on what's taking place in the world of drones that might affect you. Welcome back on the Cyber Underground. If you fast forwarded in this uh, episode, now we're going to talk about uh, some things that uh, break our heart. And we're going to start out with the Vegas tragedy that just happened, the shooting of 58 deaths of uh, some people who were just attending a concert and doing something that they love doing. And somebody who we don't know what the motivations are just decided to open fire on that crowd and randomly kill people. What, uh, what we're going to talk about now is some of the gun control measures being proposed by uh, Congress. And why does this have to do with cybersecurity? Well, you'll find out in just a second. Back with us are Jake Ross of CyberHui and Hal Cochran of Kapilani Community College here at the University of Hawaii System. Welcome back, guys. Thanks. Let's Thanks. talk about some sad stuff. So, Vegas. Hal and I were just in Vegas. We did yeah. uh, Black Hat and DEF CON, and actually Black Hat was in Mandalay Bay. Mm -hmm. where that was my first trip to to Vegas. Do I, what did you think of it? It was your first trip to crazy town. Yeah. <laughs> it was an experience, that's for sure. <laughs> it was yeah. nuts, right? Um, and of course, they hold these conferences well, well in the summer where it's, you know, thermal nuclear hot. And uh, so every time we stepped outside, we just almost died. And a couple times we got stuck outside waiting for folks, right? Mm -hmm. it, was, it was hot and, and horrible. But right now, this time of year, <laughs> it's kind of pleasant. And so they have outdoor concerts, and uh, they were holding an outdoor concert, and out of nowhere, people start getting shot. Uh, first of all, before I go into how this connects to cybersecurity, let me get your thoughts on this, guys. I mean, we have pretty loose gun laws in this country. Um, agree, disagree, grow up with guns, not with guns. I'm just afraid that, that this is becoming the new normal. This is what it's, oh, we're it's getting, going to be like because we're, yeah, we're going to get desensitized to it, yeah. and it be, be, because it happens over and over and over again. Uh, it sure happens a lot on the news in other countries, too, yeah, and, and we've had our fair share, and you're right. Is this the new normal? I hope not. I, I swear I don't want to go there if this is the new normal. What do you think? I mean, you grew up in Hilo, kind of a right. rural area. What was the gun ownership like? Uh, did you grow up around guns? Or? I didn't grow up so much around guns, but a lot of my friends went hunting. Hunting, yeah. So there's tons of hunting on the beach. Rifles, island. lever action, stuff all like that. All over the place, right? Not and a lot of handguns, though. Not too many handguns, yeah. but um, yeah, it's, I, mean, I think when the gun control laws were starting to starting to heat up, like when they were saying Obama was going to ban assault rifles, I know there was like a huge push, or when it was like uh, the end of the Mayan calendar, right? Everyone kind of um, armored up for the end of the world. Oh, yeah, 2012. So, That's right. right. Yeah, yeah. So I know <laughs> <laughs> Those kind of things that drove that, but um, yeah, I mean, it's just like with anything. I mean, you can use cars responsibly, right? You register for cars, you register for your weapons, and airplanes, airplanes. Yeah, right? I mean, it's yeah. like what this. It's the replaces. I mean, whatever the tool is that they're going to use to, uh, and it's so hard because we don't know what the motive was behind it. So I think that's kind of a motivations are scary this time, right? right? We don't know. And you're right. There's other weapons in other countries. We've already had um, people being stabbed and hacked to death with axes, and so. I guess your, your method just changes based on the accessibility of, of the weapons. I, I grew up as a military brat, and we were joking before that um, you know part of my life as a kid, we were living in East Bay, San Francisco, that's Oakland. Now it's a very rural community, a lot of, well, I mean urban, sorry. And uh, it was rural back then, and our biggest concern back there was deer and raccoon. So we always had a lever action and a scatter gun or a shotgun over, right. the, over the fireplace, which Thinking back, probably wasn't the best idea to keep loaded weapons over the fireplace. Right. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I say, right? grew up in the country, that's the way it was. So I grew up, you know, with responsible gun ownership. And uh, as laws become more and more strict on gun ownership, um, one of the uh, combative issues, I guess, in the lobby for, for the National Rifle Association, the NRA, they come back saying, we don't want a national gun registry because the government will have... Uh, ownership of all these records of of gun owners, and what if the government should turn fascist, which it might anyway because of our current administration. But if it did turn actual fascist, <laughs> they might come after the gun owners, right? And they didn't want a national database identifying all those people. My opinion, that's no longer relevant. 
Because all the gun owners in you know the Midwest are publishing photos with their guns on Facebook. All right. We can go to Google and find out all the searches. Where's my local gun club? Uh, what's the best ammunition for my Winchester Model 7? You know, um, all these searches that can be gone through in big data, we can find out who the gun owners are anyway. Is this relevant anymore, guys? A national gun registry, is this relevant? Does this make sense? It's a, it's, it's a tough issue, and partly because this is the, the, the cybersecurity uh, side of it. Hmm. Who's going to keep that information safe? Yeah. It could there be seems like, like everything. Equifax is, just gave it all up. Yeah. <laughs> and before, before that, that, the Office of Professional Management. Yeah. So our audience need to know that's Department of Defenses and several other organizations use the Office of Professional Management of the federal government to do security clearances. So they know my brother's middle name. They know where my mom was born. They know everything about me because I was a Marine and I applied for security clearance. And now because of them. It's all out there, and whatever wasn't out there because of OPM, Equifax filled in the blanks. <laughs> you know, and, right. and, and now Equifax is getting a new contract. I, I was reading that uh, Equifax was just given a contract to uh, collect and store data for the, uh, the IRS, like a seven million dollar contract. Great, that's great. What that's, could go wrong with that? Yeah, what could go wrong? Uh, I mean, we were joking that the IRS doesn't need them as a contractor anymore because all the information they're gonna provide is already in the wild. <laughs> They already let that out, so they just go search the dark web and they get all the information they want. Yeah, the bar's pretty low right now. So. The bar is really low. So yeah, if we have a national gun database uh, for registry of guns and it's it's shared nationally, which we're close to anyway, um, there's got to be a safety net. Who's controlling that data? And it, I don't think it's a matter of if you're going to get hacked. It's when you get hacked. And then how do you mitigate, right? Equifax showed us. They don't mitigate very well at all. They just, they once had it some happened, challenges. That, it was, that, that was the worst. In fact, the Department of Homeland Security found out uh, through a website that Equifax was vulnerable in March of this year right. and told Equifax, you're vulnerable. And uh, apparently, somewhere in the organization, uh, the CEO in his testimony said, We issued a, an order to get this changed and, and get this vulnerability patch, and it didn't happen. So they broke down inside. So yeah, the same thing can happen if we have a national gun reg registry database. Who's going to manage that? What if it breaks down then? And um, I, I think one of the big things is um, people don't want their mental health records in here. So I guess a lot of states, like 47 states out of 50, say that if you're mentally incapacitated anyway, that includes, by the way, depression, you're not permitted to own uh, a, a handgun or, or any kind of weapon right. until you were cleared by a psychological professional, whatever that is. Um, what do you guys think about putting that kind of information in that national database? Is that is that dangerous? What could uh, hackers do with that kind of information once they got it? Yeah, I think um, I think primarily I think like in the Equifax breach where they're finding out it looks like more of a nation state kind of attack. So it's not like your uh, your criminals or cyber criminals who are going to monetize that information. So those are the worst, right? Uh, right. They it have the most if, resources, the most time. Right. They can do it. It depends on what what effects that they're trying to achieve. So I think something like a national database with uh, medical records and everything in there is is going to be to the to their benefit if it's if it's released or if it's put in one central place, but. Uh, going going back, rewinding, it's like, I mean, it's just like, what is a problem that they're trying to solve, right? So if they can kind of address that, I think we're kind of, maybe where we're sometimes at, at work, we, we put these solutions ahead of the problems, right? It's like, oh, have I got a fix for you, right? And, and this is it. So we can see, like, you know, this is the issue, and then these are the things that we can do to get that, the courses of action or whatever plans that we can put together. Maybe it's not a national database that we need. Maybe we just need better communication between in, in the agencies, then that way we don't have one, you know, big repository of all this kind now of We have a pretty good, uh, I think Hawaii calls it the wrap back. When you register a weapon, they, <clears throat> they inform other states. Okay. Yeah. So they, they share information. 47 states do this. Uh, I did not see on the list Montana or Wyoming. And big surprise, Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> Arkansas has <laughs> got their own, own deal going on. And there's four states that don't share information with anyone else. So you could do something criminal or stupid or be mentally incapacitated or be formally committed to a mental institution in that state, right. go to another state and register your gun and get a new gun. Right. And, and they don't check that. Uh, 
That's a little bit of a problem. Here's another one that came up to me, and this is an NRA proponent, came to me, provided this argument. I want to know your opinion. They said, okay, say we have a national gun database registry. It's, it's uh, all 50 states participate, right? If I'm a nation state and I want to attack the mainland of the United States, I'd hack that database to find out where the guns are going to be, right? The heaviest concentrations of guns are where I will avoid my in my attack, I will go someplace else where there's not a lot of guns. Yeah. What do you guys think about that argument? I would think if, if I was a nation state and wanted to plan an attack, I'm not really that worried about the civilian guns. I'm worried about the army and <laughs> the armed forces uh, more so than I am, you know, the civilians who are going to come out with a handgun or a shotgun or, or something and try to fend off my army. Right. It's less Red Dawn, right? Less Wolverine kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Oh, well, I love military. Red Dawn, the, the old <laughs> one, yeah. Um, I, the, no, I, I made the same argument, and it, this person came back with uh, a little factoid that they found out after World War II that, um, and I can't remember the general's name now, I wrote uh, a famous memo saying, we should not invade the U.S. mainland because there's a gun behind every blade of grass. So it did affect their plans to take us over. There was a similar memo rumored to have been in the Kremlin. We will not attack places like New York because, well, the Bronx. And back then it was, it was a pretty hairy place. You don't want to attack that kind of a city because a lot of people will rise up and fight that aren't in the army. Uh -huh. So people you don't even expect, right? And what do you guys think about that argument? I mean, I think like today the um, war is uh, war. The modern war is different from what it was like in World War II. Like it's going to be less kinetic, going to be more cyber stuff, right? Maybe cyber so first, more won't cyber, it? More cyber, then maybe an EMP blast. I mean, oh, an economic, right? like dime, right? The right. diplomatic, um, I forget what it was, dime, military and um, economics. So that, that that's really going to play into it more than than uh, you know moving massive troops around. Because those, we have so many satellites in the sky, drones flying around, like you're going to see that kind of troop movement. It's going to be more of a remote war if we have a, a it's, war at all. Mm -hmm. It's not going to look like it did before. And so. Probably just little pockets of conflict right. rather than the whole world going yeah. to war, I hope. Right. We don't need a World War III now. Wow, this is a lot of stuff to think about. But in our last minute or so, why don't you guys just give me what your chief concern is with these prospective new normal attacks that we're experiencing. Hal, why don't you go first? I mean, what's your, what's your chief concern? Besides being the new normal, what's your biggest concern about these kind of attacks? My concern is, 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 is just the frequency. It seems like, I mean, if they're happening so often now, more, more and more, and I'm, I, I, again, as I said earlier, I'm afraid that we're just going to be just going to become numb to it. And it's going to be just a normal thing. Oh, there was another mass shooting this week. And we're not. We're going to lose the outrage. Yeah, this is, the, this is the kind the of thing now. that you should be outraged about. And if we lose that outrage, then I think we really lose something, you know, as a as a people and as, as a, a nation, culture, yeah. as, as a culture. Yeah. Jake, no, that's a tough question. <laughs> I was thinking about. I'm trying to listen to how, but yeah, it, I think a lot of it too is that we live in this 24-hour news cycle, and we get we get a lot of information. So I mean, I think part of it too is like there's probably not more shark attacks, just more reporting of shark attacks. It's very possible, and, right? So, I mean, yeah. I think there's a lot of factors. I mean, it definitely is. There, there have been, I mean, statistically more gun violence recently. Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't know what it's attributed to. It's culture plays a lot into it. You know, what are societal norms? And and um, I think you kind of, we kind of hit on a couple things about mental health, right? It's like if I'm depressed, then if I get clinically um, diagnosed as depressed, I can't, I can't get a firearm. We had a lot of So it might PTSD. prevent you from getting exactly. the help you want, yeah. So my, my biggest fear is that me or someone I love might be in that theater or watching that concert right. or at that event. And uh, somebody I love might perish in one of these horrible attacks. And uh, it just seems like our law enforcement is not able to prevent only respond, and that's that. That concerns me. What's the solution? Okay, we're out of time. Wow. Thanks, guys. I know it goes fast, that's right? Pretty good, yeah. Okay. Hello, everybody. Stay safe. <laughs>